Welcome to Elite Expert Insider Podcast, where we will inspire, motivate, and educate entrepreneurs, innovators, and growth seekers. Brought to you by Elite Online Publishing, making the best and brightest in the industry number one best selling authors. 80% of people say they want to write a book. We're assuming that's the same for you. If so, contact us at www.eliteonlinepublishing.com and make your book a reality. Hi, everyone. It's Melanie Johnson along with Jen Foster for another great podcast. Hey, Jen, how you doing? Doing great. How is everyone today? Well, they're going to be even better because uh, we've got Samantha Hartley on here and she is going to teach us how to increase your revenue, not just like by $10,000. I'm talking like 150 to over a half a million dollars a year. Does that sound good? It sounds great to me. I want to learn all her secrets. I want to know the tricks. She speaks of a, she speaks Russian. How many people do you know that speaks Russian <laughs> along with Spanish and a little bit of French? Um, but she has been doing this. She used to work for Coca-Cola. She knows super ninja tricks on how to create jaw-dropping client getting messages and offers that really can align yourself with your values and get those high ticket clients. So we're going to really dive deep into this. I'm so excited to have her here. We found her on LinkedIn and when I read her profile and everything, I just had to have her on the show. So thank you for coming. Um, Samantha, welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. I love your podcast. Thing. Great. Well, a binge tell, listener. Oh, good. <laughs> well, tell us, Samantha, a little bit about how you got into consulting and how you have you, you've helped all these women to nine times their business. Well, um, I came as uh, Melanie mentioned. I came out of a Coca Cola company. I had been hired in Russia. I was a student there, which is why I spoke Russian, and um, and I worked there um, as a student. So, in who goes to school in Russia? I mean, that, yeah, that's pretty cool. like uh, unique in itself. I'm sorry. I just had to interrupt you. Go, continue on. But who goes to school? In, oh, yeah. I just well, had to go to school in Russia. Here's what makes sense. I was a theater and uh, I was interested in theater and for, foreign language, specifically Russian. And so I thought, oh, I'll go study theater, which is, by the way, where American theater comes from is Russia. Uh, I'll go to Russia and study theater. And then so I was there in Russia studying theater and yeah. learning, you know, improving my Russian, which was dreadful when I got there. And then... Um, a coup happened. <laughs> I was there for two coups d'etat. Um, but a coup happened and I was like, well, I have a choice. I can either go home or I can stay here or what am I going to do? And a bunch of American companies came over and I started working for American companies. And then eventually the American company, the Coca-Cola company hired me to do marketing for them. So um, I had a big adventure uh, during those days and I learned a ton about like marketing and business in general. And then I did really well and they brought me to corporate and then like I hated corporate. I had the worst time ever. And this is what I actually have in common with a bunch of my clients is that they were in corporate. They, uh, there was some good stuff, which is that, you know, you get to work on a huge strategic level. You get to have budgets like, um, in the field, I had a budget of like $12 million. So a lot of these big numbers that, um, we talk about aren't big numbers for me. Um, and a lot of my clients, uh, left jobs where they were making like 200 and something thousand dollars a year or more. And so when they start their own consultancies, um, they, it's easy for them to kind of make that first hundred or 200, but then they hit a wall. So that's kind of similar to what happened to me. I left um, corporate because I really hated it. And I thought, I don't know what I'm going to do. And um, one of my big pieces of advice to people is don't burn your bridges because I didn't. And um, after I left, a bunch of my colleagues from Coke also left and they began to start their own businesses and um, or they would be hired into new businesses and they would call me to work for them as a consultant. So I got kind of um, called into consulting. I didn't um, necessarily intend that, but um, that's how it worked out for me. And it's um, what I love love so much about consulting, especially as a business for women, is that it is so, there's so much flexibility. Like you can, uh, you could get by on one client. I wouldn't advise you to do that, but you could easily get by on you know, two or three clients and have a great business and be able to shape it um, around your life. And all of my clients are doing that, if I'm honest. You know, they have either small children in the home and they work their, um, their consulting work around that, or they have kids out of the home and they want to travel and, uh, you know, play tennis, um, and then uh, uh, everything in between. So um, I, I have been location independent for a really long time. It hasn't really mattered to my clients where I'm located. Mm -hmm. And so I'm very much about having that kind of freedom in your business. And that's basically over the years, I, I, I didn't uh, begin working with um, women consultants. I began working with all kinds of service businesses and some mm -hmm. international businesses, you know, all the things that kind of made sense when I left Coke. But since then, um, 
you know, especially in the last like two years, I've decided I can work with anyone I want to and who I want to lift up are women. Yeah. There you go. There's people lifting up everybody else. So I'm going to lift up women in my business. Um, and so I, I form business growth partnerships, which means that I basically work for them for, you know, a year or more. Um, mm -hmm. Some of my clients have been with me for a few years now. Um, and we do whatever it takes working mm -hmm. together to grow their business. So people often ask, like, what's the scope of my work? Your business is enlightened marketing. Is it just marketing? And I'm like, it is whatever it takes to grow the business. And sometimes that's talking about personal stuff because people, their health gets in the way. Sometimes it's a relationship that gets in the way. And I am not a relationship coach, believe me. But having been a business for 20 years, um, I know how to, um, how to prioritize your work um, and what you need to do um, to take care of the talent in the business, which is you, so that you get the best work um, and you build what I call a profitable and joyful consulting business. So how would you say like to find those right clients? Let's say I've just walked out of corporate mm -hmm. um, consulting, uh, maybe for marketing or even with us, like we consult for businesses as, as well as books. How do you go about finding those first ideal clients? Mm -hmm. The very first ones are turn around. Uh, your employer very often will hire you right back. Huh. Um, for to do your specialty for them. Again, do not burn your bridges. And before someone's even thinking of leaving, I will uh, talk to them about talking to their um, employer uh, to see if they can do work for them. So for a yeah. lot of people, like I said, my first clients were uh, were at least four or five of them were Coke people. Um, and I still have those connections today. So, uh, um, you know, keep in mind what your network is. Uh, one of my other clients, she had come, she actually, she didn't burn the bridge with the client uh, uh, her employers had burned the bridges. Yeah. So she didn't have a great a situation when she left her last um, place, mm -hmm. but she w was part of an amazing um, trade association as part of her work. Right. Mm -hmm. So look at those, um, you know, Sherm kind of things or, um, whatever, you know, sales and marketing uh, associations, whatever those kind of associations are, or honestly, you know, friends and family, whatever you are connected to, those are great places to, um, to find your next clients. Um, one of the things that I say is to market not to your friends and family, but through them. Yeah. So mm -hmm. friends and family love you, mm -hmm. they support you. And it's a matter of saying to them, especially when you get your new marketing message, like I figured out what I'm going to do and here's what I want to say about it. So the thing I have my clients do once they have that message is go to their friends and family and say, um, Hey, I have a new message. Do you mind if I try it out on you? And of course they'll say, of course. Yeah. Uh, happily and then you say it and then they get to hear what you do with a little sense of objectivity and so right. sometimes that can lead to new business mm -hmm. I'll tell you some of the best um, consulting engagements I've gotten have been through my mom and I always say my mom is not like business Oprah my mom is like a mom and a granny um, but she talks me up to people yeah. and when she meets people that this might be relevant to she talks me up to them and some of them have been like I don't know okay we'll have her call me and then I call them and you know, if my mom can open that door, I can get myself in it. Um, and then my husband, back when he was just my boyfriend, we were at a, an event for a totally different kind of business. And he and this other guy were bored stiff. Um, and they just started mm -hmm. talking. And um, the guy was saying, ah, my wife's here for blah, blah, blah. And, uh, but she doesn't really need that. What she really needs is marketing. And again, my boyfriend who hardly, you know, he didn't necessarily know in depth what I did for business, but he heard marketing and he could put those things together. And he said, oh, well, if what you need is marketing, you should talk to Samantha. There you go. Open the door and I got in. So mm -hmm. I'm all about really just um, you creating a, a, a network yeah. um, and then getting the language out there for people so that they can share. If you need this, then you should call so-and-so. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the women you work with. I know for me, when I first got started, I didn't charge enough. So, yeah. you know, having that, knowing, you know, how much should I charge? And what is that ceiling? And can I go above that ceiling? Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I think women tend to, what I like about working with women consultants is that they tend to have a few um, beliefs or habits that just keep them stuck. Mm -hmm. And once, once I can expose them, then we can start to work on them. And sometimes they can just go away like that. Mm -hmm. So one of the big ones is that a lot of women are stuck in what I call a small habit, right? Mm -hmm. So they work on, with clients who are too small, they take engagements or projects that are too small for them to make an impact mm -hmm. uh, and they settle for prices that are too small very often because they don't have the sales skills to sell something bigger so like me i came out of a big um corporation a lot of my clients have come out of bigger companies but they had this like big brand behind them and when it's just them they feel like but this is completely different it's not 
it's not completely different. You're not selling yourself. You are invaluable. You're priceless. Mm -hmm. What you're selling is a service. And for that service, you can put a price on it. A lot of times my clients will call me and say, well, I'm going to go into this meeting. If they ask me to do so-and-so, how much should I charge them? I'm like, if, 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 I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> when you go into that meeting, you're going to ask a bunch of questions. You're going to say, what's the problem? How much is that problem costing you? What would you be able to do uh, if this problem was solved? And what would the value of that be? When you ask those questions, that way you get an idea of what um, your pricing and framing should be. Mm-hmm. And before that, what should I charge? I have no idea, right? Honestly. So go in with a blank sheet of paper and ask a bunch of questions, and then you're going to get some clues as to what you should charge. Mm-hmm. So an example of this. Um, is uh, my client, Danny, and she'd come out of a big financial services company. She was, tr- she, in t- inside of the company, she was like a trainer, an HR person, and she was doing leadership development. And that was meaningful in that company. And nowadays it's a little more meaningful. But when she went to say this to these small businesses who were too small to really know what to do with that, um, they were like, we don't want this training. And she kept making the price smaller and smaller till finally she got it down to $22,000 for this training. She was like, it's way more valuable than that. And I said, well, tell me how you're presenting it to them. And she said, well, I was training and we did this since this many days and it's $22,000. I was like, nobody wants that. Here's what you do. So she had a big meeting with this client. She went in, she did exactly what I just said. She said to them, what's, what's the problem? What's the problem costing you? What would it be um, like if this problem was solved? In this case, it was a, um, a young pharma startup they were, their sales turnover was crazy, right? So they were promoting people who weren't qualified. Um, the salespeople were, um, the leaders weren't qualified. They were great at sales. Um, the sales were going so fast, they, they had to keep up with them. They almost, it almost didn't matter who, who was in yeah. that position, but they needed yeah. good people, right? Mm-hmm. So it was about um, a $2 million opportunity there, mm-hmm. right? Of, of the impact that she could make. So I said to her, when she came back and told me this information, I said, you know, what we, what you should probably charge on this is closer to $200,000, right? Mm -hmm. And she didn't want to make a round number. So she put down $198,500 and the client said yes. So the same training that she was doing that she couldn't sell for 22,000 to anybody because nobody wanted it. She sold for 200,000. So I have a report about that, which I, um, I have a link to that, that I can give you guys at the end. But um, that is what's possible. And that's what I'm doing yeah. over and over and over again with all my clients. They're coming to me saying, um, well, the most I've ever sold, um, it, an engagement for is like $15,000. So remember my clients are going into, um, you know, anywhere from $10 million businesses to billion dollar businesses. Mm-hmm. So these, a $15,000 engagement isn't bad, but if you do 15, 15, 25, 15, 15, what I will always say is like, if you bundle those together, as you should do properly, right? The thing to do isn't to constantly do these little one-offs for people. Mm -hmm. It's to say, what's the transformation that you're looking for? And why don't we just make an annual plan or maybe even a three-year plan? This is what one of my clients does. She does a three-year plan for her clients. And in year one, she's going to do this. So what happens when you do this three-year plan? For everybody who has revenue roller coaster issues, mm-hmm. where they're like some months are forty thousand and some months are seven hundred, that was that was me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a year where I had a month that was forty thousand. I was like woohoo, and then the next month was seven hundred, and I was like uh oh. <laughs> so <laughs> if that's you, when you when you work with your clients to set up these transformational plans, you have a very different relationship to them, right? You're right. you're a partner mm-hmm. in the transformation of the company, and you're talking in transformational numbers, not 15, 25, 15, 50. Even if you just bundle those 15, 25, 15 together, you get 100K, right? So right. a lot of my clients are going in with 130K, 180K, and, and larger engagements. Mm-hmm. Um, so that to go back to your question, the thing that they're, that they're doing is they're working with clients who are too small usually. So they, um, it's important to say, what, what is the right size client to receive my gifts Mm -hmm. so that I can work in an expansive way. And what is the value that I need to put on that so that I can afford to be expansive so that it actually motivates and inspires me to be expansive. What's wonderful about the first time you charge a hundred or $200,000 for an engagement is it will freak you out. That's awesome. (laughs) Because guess what? This is when you're like, uh, uh, now what do I do? I'm like, guess what you do? You channel divine, right? Your genius isn't coming from you. Some people, mm-hmm. but 
your genius is coming from you being an instrument for the divine to work through you. So a lot of your right. genius is you plugging in to like, okay, so when I'm my, my calm self and I have a client who um, does this in the hot tub. And mm -hmm. so I had her purchase a hot tub for herself <laughs> because awesome. she does her best work in a hot tub and she should therefore, you know, to be your best self, get one. So she yeah. got um, herself a hot tub and she gets in the hot tub and oh, that she just finished her signature system or oh, I just figured out what I need to do with this client. Mm -hmm. So um, being expansive, charging expansively, it allows you to do that kind of good work for your client. And if you position it properly to the clients, they understand that they want your best work. They, you know what? They honestly j just want that problem solved. Right. They almost don't care how much it costs, especially a billion dollar corporation. It has $200,000 or it has a right. million dollars. So I have a client who had, um, a million dollar consultancy. She was like penny short of a million. She came to me and said, what happens in consulting a lot is that we do like an, an assessment phase to t find out if we're going to sell in another thing. So she'd done an assessment phase and that was $250,000, which is kind of very common. Um, she came in and kind of assessed the problem, told them where they could save and where they could make money and all that kind of stuff. And the client was like, we love it. Um, now propose to do, uh, go get that money for us, kind of come in and do that work. It's the kind of thing where you tell them like, either you can do it yourself or you can hire us to do it. And so they were yeah. like, we want you to do it. So she mm -hmm, came yeah. to me and she was like, oh my God, they want me to do it. Here's my problem. The $250,000 phase, she'd had all these sub contractors working for her and yeah. everybody got paid but her. Ah. Uh. Oh, she, so she didn't make any money on the deal. <laughs> she didn't make any money. And she was like, how, what, how would I price this thing on the next phase of it so that I make some money because right. I'm not in this to work for free. And this is yeah. the thing about a lot of businesses. It's a very dirty little secret about a lot of businesses is that their top line revenue is a really pretty number. And if you dig and dig and dig and you find out what they bring home, everybody gets paid but them. You guys, that is classic mm -hmm. um, thing that women do is that they take care of everyone but themselves. Yeah. So I will go in very often to businesses and I'll find out they have people on salary where they struggle to pay the salaries and they don't, where in months they won't make any money themselves. And I'm like, that person is going. Yeah. So you have got to make sure you are bringing that money through for yourself. We don't take care of everyone and not ourselves. So in this case, what I did was I showed her a really simple formula about how to pay your subs so that it's fair for them and you get paid the bulk of it. And right. then she mm -hmm. had bid on this, um, project, she was going to um, t go forward with something that looked like $400,000. It was super confusing. So I simplified that whole thing and um, said to her, what do you think that you can um, save or earn them in this first year? And she said, it's like 8 million. And I said, why aren't you bidding at least 800,000? And she said, oh, so I said, okay, now you are right. So this should be a minimum of 800,000. And so she co uh, contacted her person that day and the next morning she came to me and said he said yes so it's the fastest i've wow. made someone four hundred thousand, but wow. it's not the most that i've ever helped someone make but yeah. this is the thing it's like have the confidence to say i'm gonna go make a bold promise i'm gonna go and get that for you yeah. and then put the price on there of a bold price and then you're like yikes but that yikes is is you expanding to uh, meet the challenge mm -hmm. like you can do it you can do yeah. it you can believe in yourself yeah I think the belief is the biggest thing. A lot of women don't believe they can do it, even though they are incredible and they have, they have everything going for them. It's definitely the case. A lot of what we're working on is, um, is realizing you can trust yourself. You can, you can trust the universe to come through for you and to be there for mm -hmm. you. It's, you know, it's just a lot of, uh, a lot of that. I say just. Yeah. <laughs> I think well, the it's journey of most of our lives is believing yeah. in ourselves. I believing. mean, it's being in front of those right people too that have those big budgets. So yeah. um, we had one of our mentors saying, you know, don't um, spend time with people who don't have money because that's, you know, you're wasting your time. You yeah. want, you know, you're looking to make a living and if they are not making money, then they can't uh, afford your services. Yeah. So that's the key. You've got to find first the right people that you're uh, attracting the right people and putting it into the universe to those right people that have those uh, million dollar problems, $500,000 problems, billion dollar problems that you can be in there to solve and then having the confidence to add. And the formula I kind of notice from you is if you have a $2 million problem, then it's a $200,000 fix. It's like a 10% kind of can, formula. I think 10% is the minimum. What I always say to people is if I gave you, um, would you pay me 50,000 if I gave you a hundred thousand? Mm -hmm. I would. Yeah, I would. Would you pay me 50 if I gave you 60? I mean, I would, you know, seriously. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. like, what does the ROI need to look like? So I'm not suggesting that you, uh, you know, that we pay, you know, 
we're going to make them 50,000 and we charge them 49,999, you know, but um, I think, I think that 10%, usually that's so crazy far above what they are charging. Right. That I'm, yeah at least do this. But many companies are comfortable with like, you know, 30 to 50% of that expected return. And then we get into kind of like complicated questions of like, um, well, uh, how do we, how do we know we're going to make that back and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, you can work out the details in that. But what I really, you know, I really like for somebody to stand in that the confidence, the kind of confidence that they probably had when they were in, you know, a meeting with that big mm-hmm. brand logo behind their heads. Mm-hmm. When they would have been like, I have the power of the, you know, when I was at Coke, you know, I was negotiating deals for sponsorships with British Airways and Sony mm-hmm. and, you know, everybody, they would all get on the phone with us because we were Coke. And, and so I, it kind of got me accustomed to being like, I can talk to anybody. I can, uh, I can say, well, we, we're going to need, um, you know, five TVs and also $10,000. So just crazy yeah. stuff to be asking mm-hmm. for. And you can, you can ask for that same stuff here. There's, there's nothing more appealing to a, co- a client than confidence. And if you can see their potential and yeah. say confidently, I can help you do that whether that's me to my clients or them to their billion dollar companies, that's what people want. And so yeah. it's so much about, as we were saying, it's so much about them getting confident in their own skills. Yeah, yeah. I think we were guilty of that when we first started too, of dumbing down our prices. Like we'd say, okay, we're going to ask for more money. And then when we weren't getting it, well, we'll, we'll ask for less, we'll ask for less. And then we realized we're just not in front of the right people yeah. to do that to get yeah. that confidence. And I love what you're saying about having that solution. So that's what we do. Even walking through with the books, it's like, well, how much, is a client worth to you? Well, if a client, like one of your examples, if her client is worth $200,000, well, if by using a book as a marketing tool, you know, and you're going to get one client a month or even two clients, uh, you know, every quarter, what is that worth to you? So the ROI on the book is worth this. And this is what you can be paying to have it positioned right for you. But I say, can you imagine like if you're pitching to an office, a high end office of 25 people and you sent their book to everyone in their office and everyone's holding your book they're going to be talking about you and yeah. looking at your content and having that connection. So it's being in front of those right people and not being afraid to, to ask those questions to qualify. I think totally. having those qualifying questions, because so many times we're pitching the advantages. Oh, it does this, it does that. But we're not qualifying the people and addressing what the problem is and how to solve it for them. Exactly. And a lot of times we're talking about, um, you know, things like uh, deliverables or um, the the features instead of the benefits, you know, so Danny yeah. in the training example that I was saying, I'm always like, don't call your training training for goodness sake, because training is a commodity. So all of these things that we're talking about are commodities. What you're saying is, you know, we're going to turn Amazon into your salesperson. I'm like, that's pretty appealing. That's yeah. much better than like, help us write your book with you. Um, you know, a, a book is a commodity, but, um, figuring out how to um, make Amazon work for you or getting your hands into, you know, 20 people's, getting your book into 20 people's hands. Those are, that's the way to talk about it. And the funny thing is that everybody thinks that they're doing that already. Almost everybody does. I'll talk to people and they'll be like, well, what I said was this. And I'll be like, hold on. (laughs) What you said was it's a training and it has this many days and it has this many, do you hear how that's like features? And I don't understand. Yeah. And a lot of times people, especially those who come out of corporate, feel like, but isn't it obvious what those benefits are? I don't want to be insulting by saying that. And I'm like, most people cannot connect the dots from your thing, Mm -hmm. your service or product or program to their um, benefit, to their outcome. So you have to say, here's what the outcomes for you are going to be. Your salespeople are going to be, um, uh, are are going to be able to sell. Your leaders are going to be able to coach performance of those behind them. And that means, see, we have to take it even a step further with our dots. And that means that you're gonna be able to go after all those sales, you're gonna make your targets. You, the boss, will be able to go, be able to go home at five because you won't be constantly like over, you know, yeah. overseeing them the whole time, that kind of thing. So connecting the dots on those benefits is really key. You know what, I almost think it goes back to, if we put it in our mind, the infomercial, that you see like on weight loss. Hey, are you struggling with weight? Are you feeling sluggish? Are you doing this? So that's the problem of the corporation. Are your sales not great? Are you having this issue? And, and then putting a value to that. How much is that worth to you to change? Yeah. 
And then they say, well, what would it mean to you? Like the infomercial, what would it mean to you if you had energy and you could play with your grandkids? And then they give the solution. If you were 35 pounds less, which might be the deliverable by taking yeah. this product, and then you're going to get all these things. You're going to be, yeah. feel better. You're going to be healthier. You're going to live longer. You're gonna, and, and the infomercial doesn't have to connect those dots, but they do all the way yeah. down to the detail. It's mm -hmm. that same type of formula. And I think we forget that that's been so tried and true. And when we're selling ourselves, it's hard to even talk about what you're giving them sometimes. It is hard. And it seems like it's obvious. This is, you know, a, a thing that's um, kind of the case. And, you know, one of the things I was saying that uh, the small habit is a problem with women consultants. Another thing that's a habit is, um, is that they're really humble. And like, if some, if they're really good at something and it comes really easily to them, they feel like it's not valuable. Mm -hmm. And that's usually your gift, by the way, that's usually right. your essential gift is the thing that you do that is so easy for you. You're like, what, that old thing? I just, I don't know. What, what did I do? And it's like, that thing is, is really super valuable. And that I think is the reason that they don't, um, amplify the benefits of it more because this thing feels like the thing that you throw away and it's like here's this other stuff this stuff is really hard for me yeah. um this is i can talk about this stuff and it's like no but the things are this is so this is why my business is about profitable and joyful consulting so profitable is like listen let's be clear we're in business for a reason it should be profitable and that money should trickle down from not just paid to everybody but it should come to you and then joyful because you should work with clients who adore you and who give you life and energy your work in the business should be joyful and so the, the the actual stuff that you're doing it should be like an intellectual challenge right like figuring out my signature system i'm working with some some clients this morning on it and they're kind of arguing points in a, in a good way like oh but what about this thing and what about that and it's like an intellectual conversation about how they are teaching the clients leadership or teaching the clients mm -hmm. um you know to get more done or whatever um and that piece of it that should be the work and that work is actually really fun and joyful. So if I would say if it's like, if it doesn't feel good, you're not doing it right. So yeah. that's probably what's happening in the marketing and the sales. Focus on the part of the business that is like so energizing and then like figure out how you can be doing that more and more often. That's usually, you know, the key. And I always feel like, you know, it's like, nobody wants to eat their vegetables. Well, there is a vegetables part of our business that people mostly don't want to do. And for a lot of my clients, that's, you know, the marketing piece or the sales piece, but I can teach them to love that more. But if there's other aspects of it that you're doing that you don't love, you shouldn't be doing them. Somebody yeah. else should be doing them. I love that you bring the joy into it and enlightened the enlightenment, right? It has to be joyful. You have to feel enlightened and then you can continue doing it. If it's not joyful, we should all go back to those crap corporate jobs we had. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I, I can make, you know, people could definitely, I mean, it's not, at a certain point, they won't be able to make the money that they're making in consulting and they yeah. won't have that flexibility. And you know, what else is really great about consulting that I love is that almost every business and a lot of my clients are this, like a CFO to go, a, um, an HR, a HR person to go, a marketing person, uh, all finance. So all of those um, professions uh, there can be like an outsourced version of them, which is again, what most of my yeah. clients are doing. They're specialists in something that that company either doesn't need to hire full time. So my CFO client, for example, she works for clients who are large enough to need a CFO, but too small to need a full time CFO. Um, so she's with them in that interim stage. Um, marketing people, I have marketing people who are doing similar stuff to that. Like they come in and they supplement or they're doing a specialty. Um, HR people, they're, you know, HR people within a company, even if you have a, a large one, again, like my client who's working with a billion dollar company, they have, you know, scads, they have offices all over the world and all of these people, but none of those individuals has specialties in the things that she has specialties in. And even if they did, they would not have time to make that kind of an impact in the company. Yes. So the opportunities in consulting are amazing because you can take your sliver of a specialty and sell that to a company who's like, come in because we need that and we yeah. don't want to hire that full time. Mm -hmm. Makes We could just talk to you for like another hour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great information. We could just keep going and going and going. So tell us how people can get in touch with you, Samantha. Um, so you find me is or want to work with you. Oh, yes. Uh, a good way to find me is on LinkedIn. So I'm Samantha Hartley on LinkedIn. Um, and then a, a good place to start is um, you can download a case study with a lot more information about what Danny did with the, the pharma sales company. This is the 22,000 to, um, to 198,500. We call that the 9X yes formula because she actually got a nine times 
uh, upgrade on the price of that program. Um, so it's like a case study where I kind of detail a, a little more about like, it looks like a magic trick. So I'm like, well, let's break down exactly how we did that. So um, that is at the 9xyesformula.com and it's nine, the number, and then X, the letter, the 9xyesformula.com. Okay. Awesome. And I welcome anybody to reach out anytime. We're going to download it for Great. sure. Right after this, yeah. I'm going to go there and download that. <laughs> Study we'll it. Put, yeah, and we'll put cool. that at the bottom of the, the video for YouTubers. And those who are listening can go to our website on our blog and check out the podcast show notes. Well, thanks for coming, Samantha. Thank you so much for coming. You enlightened all of us today, inspired us. Um, everyone go after those bigger ticket clients, 9X your offer. I'd love to make sure you ask all the questions, get to the ideal clients. So also we want you to subscribe to our podcast, um, become addicted to it like Samantha. She's uh, binge <laughs> listening. So, um, and leave us a review. We appreciate that too. And if you're looking to become an author, a best-selling author, and would like to learn how to use your book as an advertising marketing tool for for your company products or services, please look us up at eliteonlinepublishing.com and uh, just fill out the submission form and we'll see if you qualify to work with us. Um, we'll talk to you soon. See you at the next great, awesome, informative podcast. Bye. If you'd like to create the most powerful advertising tool for your business, contact us at eliteonlinepublishing.com where we will help you create, publish, and make your book a number one bestseller and show you how to get new leads and more revenue for your business. If you'd like to check us out on our Facebook page, we have a free book for you as our gift. Just go and click free book. Remember to subscribe and leave a comment for our podcast. We would love to hear from you.